Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode, EM tells my husband not to order for me or for me to use sign language. Don't you dare yell at my kid. Entitled Mother Christmas Help. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. EM tells my husband not to order for me or for me to use sign language. Here's a little history of me so this makes more sense. I'm nonverbal due to an injury and communicate exclusively via writing and sign language, unless I want to feel like I'm pouring half molten nails down my throat. DH, my husband. EM, entitled mother. PK, poor kid. I love eating at restaurants. Denny's, Applebee's, little family-owned Mexican and Chinese places, etc. What that means I gotta get my food, which my husband typically orders for me to avoid me playing a game of charades with the waiter slash waitress. We were eating out and apparently this was wrong. So we were getting our food and this little kid near us, maybe 8 or 9, was watching us since the restaurant was fairly empty. Right after the server leaves the kid can audibly be heard speaking with his mother, a woman probably in her mid to late 40s. PK, mommy. What about her? EM, she wasn't paying attention, I'd assume, hmm? What was that PK? PK, he ordered for both of them. EM, he what? PK, the girl didn't talk to him. EM, that's not right, let's go see if there's a reason PK. At this point she takes a few steps over towards us, PK in tow. EM, hi you too. DH, hello? EM, who is this? She motions towards me, your girlfriend? DH, close enough, do you need something? EM, do you do that often? DH, do what often? EM, order for her? DH, all the time. EM, could you please stop that? DH, I'd rather not. EM, I'm asking nicely. PK, can she not talk? DH, basica. EM cuts him off, just don't do it again. I don't want my kid to grow up to be some barbarian. DH, no, feel free to leave us alone. She leaves with a huff and that seemed to be it for the night at first, as we got our food we started talking, signing, both clearly a little confused about what this strange woman's issue was. Now, when I'm saying crazy in sign language I use the ever known finger pointing to head crazy, which I happened to start using right as she re-approached us. EM, what are you two doing? DH, please go away ma'am. EM, I'm not going to let you teach my kid gang signs. So stop it. DH, we're not teaching anything, it's a sigh. EM, I don't care what it is, stop it. Just talk like normal people. She physically put air quotes on the word talk, classy. She soon walked away, and we continued our conversation with her angrily staring at us and trying to shield her kid from the terrific gang signs up until they left. On behalf of all people who don't talk I'd like to apologize for encouraging gang culture. EM should go back to school. And encourage this barbaric culture brought on to us by the government? How could you suggest such a thing? The correct response here is very loudly saying, look lady, for the second time. I do. Not. Want. To. Buy. Your kid. Leave us alone or we will get the police involved. LOL. I'm going to use this someday. It's genius. What I don't get about this sub in general, and this post in particular, is people's general inability to just mind their own business and their tendency to just come lecture everybody about what they should be doing or not doing. Maybe it's just my social anxiety talking but couldn't she leave them alone even though what she supposed they were doing conflicted with her ideology? 
Some men order for their female partners, for a variety of reasons, some misogynistic, so what? What happened to live and let live? You can teach your kid about gender equality without trying to publicly shame people who don't practice it to the letter of your law. Funny, had my kid at that age spotted people using sign language and shown interest, and if they looked friendly and open to questions, we would have approached them and introduced ourselves so that she would have the opportunity to meet people who used alternative ways to communicate, not to show off our ignorance. Don't you dare yell at my kid. Hey everyone. So back before I lost my leg due to health issues, I drove a school bus for many years. I drove special education, regular education, elementary, middle school and high school over the different years. This story is about an elementary school parent. I had picked the kids up from the school at the end of the day and was dropping them off back home. On the way to the first stop, there was a child standing up in the back. So I yelled out over the sound of screaming children and a loud engine for the kid on the yellow jacket to sit down. They did, and everything was good. At the second stop, the child got off the bus and as the last kid stepped off, the father of the child came up to the doors. Father, did you yell at my kid? Me, not noticing the yellow jacket kid behind him, I don't know, sir. Did they do something wrong? Father, well my kid said you yelled at them to sit down. Me, finally seeing the child behind him, yes sir, they were standing up in the back of the bus and for safety reasons, they need to stay seated. Father, my kid is a good kid, there's no reason to yell at them. Me, sir, the bus is loud. Father, cutting me off, if you don't know how to talk to kids without yelling, then you don't need to be working around children. Me, I'm sorry, sir. But with the screaming kids and... Father, getting louder, I'm going to make sure you don't work around kids again. Me, sir, there's no reason to shout. I'm trying to explain. Father, angry, give me your boss number. I'm going to get you fired. Me, sighing, sir, you can call the transportation office and talk to them there. I need to go get these other kids home. Excuse me. And I shut the door in his face. As I pulled away from the stop, I grabbed the CB radio. Me, bus number 88 to dispatch. Dispatcher, go ahead. Me, you're probably going to get a call. So yeah, that's the story. Nothing ever came off it though, never heard if he even called in and never saw him again. My kid is a good kid, there's no reason to yell at them. With this dad's attitude, his kid won't remain a good kid for very long. Agreed. The kid did seem okay at the time, just wanted to stand I guess. But right, they won't be that way for long. Should have told him that his kid can walk to school, or he can adjust his working hours, assuming he works, to take him himself. Where I'm from, parent and kid like that would be denied access to the bus. Drive your precious yourself or kid best, get used to walking. You did the right thing by keeping the kid safe and telling him to sit down, hope you don't get fired. Entitled Mother Christmas Help I, 25F know that the title is a bit confusing, but please let me explain. I am the eldest of four, 21M and twin 16F. While my brother and I no longer have to suffer living under the same roof as our narcissistic mother, our minor younger sisters are not so lucky. My sisters have told me that our mother will steal their jewelry under the pretense of borrowing. I've learned growing up that if she asks to borrow anything, you will most likely not see it again. My mother is the type of person who will buy you something, then take it away for herself two weeks later if she doesn't see you using the item. She has even gone as far as to take my sister's name necklaces. No, they don't share the same name, but they have the same first initial. I really want to get my sister's jewelry for this Christmas. I've come to the conclusion that I will just get my mother similar jewelry as well in hopes that she won't steal my sister's. For extra insurance, I want to buy lockable jewelry boxes. Here is where I need help. Does anyone already have a lockable jewelry box that they can vouch for? I have thought about just getting them lockboxes, 
but I fear that it might have a worse reaction from my mother than if it was a lockable jewelry box. Start giving your sisters experiences. Make it sound dull so your mom doesn't want to go. Then, take them on a spa day or something else that they will love. Your mom can't steal experiences from them. If she horns in, change the outing to lunch at McDonald's until she figures out you won't pay for her to join you. What would stop your mom from taking the jewelry boxes as well? I would get them something with their full name, not just their initial. Your mom would look stupid wearing a bracelet or necklace that says, for example, Emma when her name is Elizabeth. Also, maybe advise your sisters to just not take off the jewelry as your mom is a known thief. The necklaces she had already stolen from my sisters were their first name. I would love nothing more to not get my mother anything. But I know my own family dynamic. If I want to help give my sisters somewhat of a normal life until they are financially stable to live on their own, I have to play nice with my mother. Think of it as happy mother, happy life. Ask the girls what they'd really like. Unless they ask, don't buy them good jewelry or anything that your mother could easily steal and sell. Locking jewelry boxes won't help. Your mother could steal the whole box and break the lock. Can you keep what you buy them at your house? I would not get your mother anything stating she stole your items when you were there and deserves nothing until all are returned to you and your siblings' items returned to them. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.